cool down, Kelly. If Sue can wait for 90 days, you can hang out a little longer. Ooh, it's getting dark. Night's coming to the Billabong. Jeez, what's all that racket? How's a creature supposed to get any sleep around here? I'm afraid sleep isn't on the schedule. Night is when the Billabong comes alive, especially for the local amphibians. Like everyone else at this time of year, these frogs are in the mood to mate, and there's quite a racket that these males compete for the best females. And here's something for you to pay attention to, Kelly. No one watches the frog's offspring. These little tadpoles have been on their own since their mother laid her eggs. Well, every species is different. Those tadpoles look like great snacks for other billabong animals. Without a parent to protect them... That's right. A lot of tadpoles get eaten. But that's why there are so many. Even if a bunch of them become bird feed, some will make it through. And speaking of making it through, Sue's 90-day wait is just about to pay off. That's a new kind of squeak. It's Sue's hatchlings doing their hatchling thing. Hatching. <laughs> Look at Sue go. That's one sound she's been waiting for. She's got to give the hatchlings a helping hand and get them off of that mound before they smother. Wow, Sue is pretty pumped up for the job. Hey! Oh, ouch! Sue, chill out. You're crushing him. Don't worry. Those guys have tough little hides. And besides, this is one crocodile mother who knows what she's doing. Check this out. She picks them up in her powerful jaws, jaws that could crush your head, and gently carries them to the water's edge. Sue works through the night, making sure every one of her 30 hatchlings gets from the nest to the water. But it looks like some of these guys aren't so sure. Not to worry. Sue has one job as a crocodile mom, and that's to give all her hatchlings a head start on survival. Of course, there are always a few upstarts who don't need any help from mom. Feisty little tykes. They're swimming around and snapping at snacks just like the big guys. Chalk it up to instinct. Crocodiles have to start hunting right away. So these little guys are born a bit, uh, snap-happy. Looks like it's not long before they get the hang of it. Now I see what all those tadpoles are for. Hey, Junior, you missed one! How does Sue keep up with 30 of these little snappers? Well, she does her best to protect them. But as they start hunting farther and farther away, there's not much Mom can do. And I'll bet most of the 30 end up as salty snacks for other animals in the billabong. You got it. It might seem like a rotten deal, but the young salties are an important link in the billabong food chain. Check this out. The food chain is nature's way of making sure that everyone has a chance to grab a bite to eat. Which usually means that the little guys are the losers. The nice thing about nature is, there's always someone smaller than you to munch on. These mini salties seem like a likely feast for just about anyone. But they have smaller neighbors that they'll hunt for dinner. Like tadpoles and little fish. But where there are little fish, you'll also find bigger fish. Like this barramundi, an underwater monster with a craving for croc. At 5 feet long and 120 pounds, this is one fish you don't want to mess with. Look out! Oh, ouch! Our salty made a nice meal, but in the billabong, there's no time to loosen your belt and relax. You've got to watch your tail in case you're the next guy's dinner. That's what I call getting your just desserts. Mmm, crunchy. Goodbye, Barramundi. Mm. 
Only one in a hundred baby saltwater crocs makes it past the age of five, and there's more working against them than the food chain. Just when they're big enough to make it on their own, the dry season hits hard. Now there's something bigger to worry about than a barramundi. Our hatchlings have to fight the heat and the shrinking waters of the billabong. Man, life for our saltwater hatchlings is tough. And there's more trouble to come as we start the last leg of our journey. Are any of our little salties left? There are still a few floating around, especially one tough little guy named, uh... Mm, Sam. Fine, Sam. Sam's managed to escape the billabong's predators, but there's one thing he can't get away from. Northern Australia's dry season. Okay, so the rains stop and the air dries out a bit. There's an awful lot of water in that billabong. How bad can the dry season be? Bad. This isn't just a little bit of dry air, but some serious heat that'll bake this land into a crisp. Remember, the billabongs are fed by the flooded floodplains, and once it stops raining, the floodplains drain back into the sea. Which means no more water for the billabong. Right. Soon water levels here begin to drop, and all the animals that depended on the waters for life begin to die off. Looks like the animals at the bottom of the food chain, like these small fish, get a raw deal once again. Well, they are the first to go, which means it's an all-you-can-eat for the big guys. Even Sue, who's finally free from her mothering duties, takes part in the feast. She starts off with a fillet of snake. Ugh, please. And finishes with a feathery light dessert. Oh, look out. Let's get back to Sam. It's time for this guy to buy or fly. Either stay in the billabong and hope that it won't dry out too much, or hit the road and head for the coast, where his chances for survival are much better. If he makes it. But you know what? Sam looks like the adventurous type. I'll bet he decides to set off for the salty seas. Right you are. The local birds are so full from feasting on fish that they don't even notice our little traveler. Now that's traveling in style. But soon, Sam runs into a serious obstacle. A croc's first instinct is always to travel by water. Sam's found a waterway that looks promising, but he ends up at a dead end. It's drying up so quickly that the billabong has been cut off from the floodplains. Oh no, that means he's stuck here. Unless he walks. To the coast? That's crazy. He'll never make it. But you don't know unless you try, and with the billabong's water shrinking fast, it's time for Sam to hit the high road. Well, at least he'll be far away from that nasty barramundi. But risking his life with a whole new group of potential predators. Oh yeah, like this wallaby is really fierce. When in doubt, show him your teeth! Sam doesn't know what a wuss he's met up with. Okay, so he's not going to be lunch for a wallaby. Our little crocodile has a bigger problem to deal with. It's a long way to the ocean, and northern Australia's floodplains are baking in the dry season heat. How do the local animals make it through? A lot of them don't. Now's the time when it doesn't pay to be one of the big guys. The more water you need, the less likely you are to make it to the next rainy season. Of course, for a pint-sized predator, there's no guarantee either. It's gotten so hot that this turtle can barely keep his feet on the ground. It's got to rain sometime, and those look like storm clouds gathering on the horizon. are really heating up. Instead of rain, these clouds bring fire from lightning that's hit the dry vegetation. I can't stand to watch. But there's Sam, cool as a crocodile, 
struggling on through. And now it does look like rain, and sweet relief. Hey, what's going on here? That's just a turtle who buried himself in the cool earth, waiting for the rain. Looks like it's time to celebrate. Soak it up, Sam. We're back where we came in, at the start of the rainy season, and Sam has found his way to Australia's northern shore, ancestral home of the saltwater crocodile. A new home to the new generation. Wow, it's like we've come in a big circle. Now that our little guys have made it, they'll toughen up those thick crocodile hides. Until they're ready to make the journey again, back to the billabong. Oh, I love a happy ending. See you later, alligator. In a while, crocodile. <laughs>